lovelies, I hope you're all well. It is super cold, winter is definitely coming. The craft room has not heated up yet, hence my very, very searching hood gear. I've been doing Crifty Crafty for about a year and a half now and in that time we have shared so many different tips, tricks and hacks not just in the tutorials but also on the Facebook lives and also on Instagram posts and things like that so over kind of the entire social media network there has been a lot of tips, tricks and hacks that I have shared However, I decided that they needed to be put into one video so this is what we're going to do today there are lots of tips, tricks and hacks in this video, so go and get yourselves a cuppa, get yourselves comfortable, and hopefully you're going to learn some new tips, tricks. So when you're first starting out and you're trying to work out how to be organised and you're trying to figure out different products, it can be really hard to work out the difference between vinyl and iron-on. For some reason, it's just something that we've all found difficult when we start. There's a really quick, easy trick. So if we turn them over, you'll see immediately there is a big difference. So vinyl will always have some form of card or paper backing, whereas iron-on will not. Iron-on has a waxy consistency to the back of it, and there's nothing that you can peel from the back. Just looking at them, you can immediately see the difference between the vinyl and the iron-on just by turning them over and checking the back. So I want to very quickly talk about transfer tape. You can get lots of different types of transfer tape. There are three main kind of areas for transfer tape. There's strong grip tape, there's your normal kind of clear tape, and then there is paper transfer tape. I love paper transfer tape, I use it a lot, I use it for curved surfaces, I use it for delicate items such as balloons, I use it for card, there's lots of things that paper transfer tape is fantastic for. My clear transfer tape I use for most of my vinyls, it works brilliantly with most vinyls and it's completely reusable as well. And then we have some Cricut Strong Grip Transfer Tape. This is the transfer tape that you want to use with the Cricut Glitter Vinyl. Cricut Glitter Vinyl is very coarse and you can feel the glitter. You want to use the Strong Grip Transfer Tape with this. These are the only two things that I use together and I use nothing else. So I will not use another transfer tape with the Cricut Glitter Vinyl and I will not use the Cricut Strong Grip Transfer Tape with anything but the Cricut Glitter Vinyl. I've got a little bit of the Cricut normal transfer tape here and when you peel it back it is incredibly sticky. A quick tip just to take away some of that stick is to get some fabric or use your jeans and you're just going to get the transfer tape and you're just going to lay it on the fabric or your jeans and then you're just going to pull away. Now you will end up with some fibres on there, that's absolutely fine. It's just going to bring away some of that stickiness so that when you put your vinyl on there it's not impossible to remove it. My Air 2 or if you've got an Air, I always keep my dial set to custom. The reason for this is you can quite often forget to change the settings and also if you keep it on the custom setting it means that you'll always remember that you can search for other settings. So sometimes we may find that our blades are not cutting the way that we would perhaps like them to cut. So the first thing you want to do is check the blades. So in terms of the deep point and the fine point blades, on the housing is a little kind of push and you can push that down and you can then check your blade and you want to just very gently make sure that there's no fibres on there, you've got no card or vinyl stuck on there and just remove any kind of debris that you can find. With the knife blade, you do not want to be running your fingers over that. It is really sharp. So you just want to have a look. If there is any debris, you can get a cloth like this. So it's a, it's a kind of like car cloth. No fluff or anything on there. And we're literally just going to use it to clean off your knife blade. 
With the rotary blade, if you can see that there's lots of fibres on there, you do not want to do what I did and run your finger across it. That is the worst thing you could possibly do. What you can do is you can go in there and blow, so give it a really good blow and it will remove a lot of the fabric fibres. And again, the other option is to get a cloth like this. You want to make sure there is a fair amount between the blade and your finger. And you're just going to very gently run the blade across the fabric. In terms of your deep point, your fine point and your knife blade, also your bonded fabric blade, tin foil is your best friend. So you want to roll up a ball of tin foil and then you just want to come in and very gently just place your blade into the tin foil just three or four times and that will just help to resharpen it. If I want to cut anything small, so for example a nail decal, this is the word love and it's being cut out at 0.5 inches. I always cut it on the washi sheet setting and I come in first and remove the middle pieces. Once the middle pieces are removed, I'm going to come in and grab a corner and I can then just gently start peeling away. And there you go, you've got yourself a very tiny, very small nail decal. The washi sheet setting is fantastic for really small, intricate cuts. Once again, we've got a really intricate cut here. The lines on this text are so, so small. I tried cutting it with the vinyl setting, it just ripped the vinyl up. So I've gone in with the washi sheet setting and it has cut perfectly. So if you are working with a small text or image or quite a detailed text or image with really small lines, the washi sheet setting is the way to go. This is going to be a nightmare to weed, it's not going to be fun at all. So we're going to do something called reverse weeding. So I've got some transfer tape here and we're just going to come in and place it over the entirety of our vinyl design. We're not going to weed it because it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to weed and this is going to make life so much easier. So we're going to transfer it as we normally would, so give it a roller from the front and then from the back. We're then going to come in and peel from the back and then we're just going to lift up a corner of the vinyl and we're going to come in and we're gently just going to start peeling away and this makes life so much easier especially when we're dealing with these tiny tiny lines like this and you can see that our vinyl is staying exactly where we want it to stay. We can then get this bit and again we can just gently start weeding out. And then we can come in and we can remove all the middle pieces. That is then ready to transfer. It's been nice, quick, simple and easy and we haven't had to worry about these really small, delicate lines. So I have two systems for my scraps. The first is these magazine boxes. I just got these from Ikea and then I've simply spray painted them and I've then labelled them. And I keep lots of my bigger scraps in here. So anything kind of A4, uh, A5, kind of nice sizeable scrap pieces I will keep in these boxes. They're all labelled, I know exactly what the vinyl or the iron on is and I also know which brands they are as well. With all my smaller scraps I use all these folders here. You can pick them up for nothing, they're great, they're small, they fit nicely in a drawer. I've got about 30 of them all in one drawer and they've got different types of scraps in them, different vinyls, different iron-ons, they're all labelled and it just helps me to keep really organised. So if I have really small pieces of scraps, I keep them all in one folder and I just write on the back of them what they are and where they're from. You are able to write on the back of both vinyl and iron-on. 
My number one storage solution is my IKEA pegboard. I absolutely love these pegboards. They are so amazing and they provide you with so many different storage solutions. It's unbelievable. You can buy so many different accessories for these and they are well worth looking at. As you can see, I keep all my mats up here. They're hung nicely, they're all colour coordinated. Uh, I've also got them coordinated by size as well. And it just means that they're not packed into a cupboard or a drawer. They're hanging the way that they should be. And again, I'm utilising my wall storage. I'm also able to hang a lot of my tools. So I've got my uh, manual rotary cutters there, I've got my fabric brayer which as you all know I adore, I've got all my different blades hanging up. Another must have storage solution for me is the Cricut tool holder. This is fantastic, I've got three of these and they're all chocker full of my tools, I've got brushes in there which I use for different things such as embossing, so they're really great, they don't take up a lot of room and they just keep all your tools in one place. Don't forget to utilise your Cricut machine storage. So I like to keep a lot of my different blades in here, I've got my replacements for some of my blades that have been taken out of their packaging, I've got replacement blades for my True Control knife, um, just a great, again, a great storage solution. Don't forget that the front part of your maker has a storage tank and that tank has a nice silicone bottom on it so you're able to store your blades in there face down without having to worry about them blunting. There's also storage for your pens. Now this is in all the air machines and the maker, you're able to store your pens. Now I like to keep my pens face down. There's three reasons for this. The first is that obviously the ink will run down to the tip. The second is that they are ready face down to be placed exactly the way they should into your A clamp. The other reason is, as you can see at the bottom of the Cricut pens, there is a letter. So these two have got an F and an M. The F is for fine point and the M is for medium point. So you're able to see not only the colour of the pen, but also if it's a fine tip, a medium tip and all the other tips that are available as well. So there are four different mats available, there's the blue light grip mat, the green standard grip mat, the purple strong grip mat and the pink fabric mat. If you are unsure of which is which, you can see at the top of each of the mats it clearly tells you what your mat is. There are also two different mats in circulation. Some will have flowers on them and some are plain. Now just to be very clear, the Cricut clearly state that you are not to clean your mats, so you do do this at your own risk. My kind of thinking is that if the mat's near the end of its life anyway, it's lost its stick, you're not really going to lose anything by giving it a whirl. So with the flower mats like this, you are able to use chemicals such as elbow grease which you can get from places like the range. In the States you also have um, products that you can use on the mats. You want to give it a really good squirt and then leave it to soak for about five minutes. Then you can go in with your extra large scraper and you're just going to scrape away the excess. You then want to go in with some lukewarm water just to remove any suds. And then you can pat dry using some kitchen towel and then just leave to air dry. I have got a full tutorial on this. If you're finding that your mats are dirty but they're not quite dirty enough uh, to warrant cleaning them, you can go in with some non-alcohol baby wipes. Anything like water wipes are absolutely fine. You just want to give it a nice quick brush down with your wipe and then you want to leave it to air dry.
If you found your mat has lost its stick and it is kind of towards the end of its life, you can go in with something like some fairy liquid, just some normal washing up liquid. Again, you're going to add it to your mat with some lukewarm water. You're going to leave it to soak for about five minutes. You do not want to use your scraper with these mats. It will remove the coating. Instead, you want to just go in with a washcloth, give it a nice quick wash. You're then going to remove the suds using some lukewarm water. Again, you can pat down with some kitchen roll and then you can leave to air dry. The pink fabric mats are again different, so if you've got big pieces of fabric or felt left over, you can come in and just remove them using the tweezers. If you find you've got lots of little pieces like this all over the mat, that is absolutely fine. It is not a problem. The mat will continue to work as it should, even with these small fibres all over it. If, for example, you've used a non-cricket felt and you find that you've got lots of fluffy fibres everywhere, you can go in with some transfer tape and just place it over your mat and then remove your transfer tape and it will then pick up any fluff that may be removable. Once you feel your pink fabric mat has come to its end, there's absolutely no stick on there at all. We can then come in with our fairy liquid and we can clean them the same way we would with the other non-flower mats. So an IELTS feature that I absolutely love on the app is the snap mat, but trying to get it to snap can sometimes be a little bit difficult. I find the easiest way to do it is to place your mat on the floor you want to come in and stand directly over your mat then you want to place your phone down on there and I find if you're stood directly over it will snap it pretty much straight away that has then taken a picture of our snap mat really quickly nice and easy to do and we're then able to use our snap mat so the other thing that snap mat is brilliant for is something called fussy cutting. So fussy cutting is when you've got cardstock such as this and you've got one particular image or area that you want to cut out. So for example, it could be that there's a picture of a specific person. For example, with this one, I want to cut out just the Merry Christmas circle, but I don't want the presents around it. So I've now taken a picture of my snap mat so I can go to use. You can then see that we've got our circle on our mat so we can bring our circle over. And we can then place it exactly where we want it to cut. I absolutely love my knife blade, I really do. But one of my biggest bugbears about it is until you've done your first complete cut, on your chipboard, basswood, balsa wood, even foam, you do not know how long it's going to take. And of course you've already cut into your material. So if it's say a three hour cut, you're then kind of tied in for three hours. It doesn't always take that long. Sometimes it can be 10 minutes. It really does depend on the image. It depends on the size. It depends on how complicated it is. And it also depends on what material you're using. The cut times can vary dramatically. And this is where this tip really comes in. So you can see we've got our mat ready and we've got no material on it. And we've got our knife blade in our clamp. Now it has to be in there because when we press cut, it's going to come into this corner and it will register our knife blade. However, as soon as it comes out, we are going to remove the knife blade from its clamp. Now I suggest only doing this if you are confident opening and closing that clamp. If if you are not confident or you feel like you're going to cause any damage, do not do it. It is your responsibility, it's your choice to do this. I find it works brilliant for me. It's not going to work brilliant for everyone. It's just a tip that I use and I'm putting it out there. But you have to be confident in yourself to be able to do it. We're going to let it come in and scan. 
As soon as it comes out, we're going to open the bee clamp and we're going to remove the knife blade. We can then close the bee clamp up and of course it's cutting and it's going to do its first complete cut but we've got no knife blade in there and we've got no material on our mat. Once it's done its first complete pass and we've got the timing and you've decided whether you want to go ahead with it or choose a different image, we're going to pause and we're then going to unload the mat. We can then put our product on our mat, we can put our knife blade back in the bee clamp and we can do the entire cut knowing exactly how long it's going to take. If I'm doing an intricate design or a small design, I always use my deep cut blade. It will not cut any deeper than the setting that you set it on, but because the angle rotation is deeper on the deep cut blade, it allows it to move at a better rotation angle. So for anything small, for anything cursive, for anything quite detailed, I always use my deep cut blade. If I'm working with cardstock, again, I'm going to turn my mat over and I'm just going to start very gently removing all my pieces. You want to make sure you don't overbend your mat. You can use your true control knife your Cricut weeding tools, your Cricut scraper and your Cricut tweezers to help you remove your pieces. If you just take your time and you don't overbend your mat you'll find that it all just removes itself so so easily. Once the bulk of it's removed, you can then come in with your weeding tool or your true control knife or your tweezers and you can just remove all the excess pieces. Once everything's removed, again, I'm going to turn my mat over and I can use my XL scraper or my spatula to just come in and help me remove my card from my mat. So you can see the back side of our cardstock is absolutely perfect. We've got no rips or tears in there. And the front is also beautiful. So I just find that that's the easiest way to work. So I've got some paper transfer tape here and I've got a money box. You can see that it's a curved surface. So with a curved surface, I always use the following technique and I always use paper transfer tape because it's not reusable. So me doing what I'm about to do to it doesn't matter. So I've got some text here and I've got my paper transfer tape and I'm just gonna transfer it the way I normally would. So roller it from the front, roller it from the back and remove from the back as well. So I've got my text and I do this with images as well and I've used this technique for years. You'll see it in a lot of my videos, especially all of my curved surface videos. So anything like glasses, uh, balloons, baubles, I use this technique. So I'm gonna come in with my scissors and I'm just gonna start snipping all the way around. And if I can go in between my letters, I'm going to do that. And you just want to keep snipping all the way around. If you've got two lines of text, you want to come in and you want to snip those. You obviously want to make sure that you're not meeting in the middle. But you want to be quite generous with your snip. And then we can snip in between each of these letters as well. And as I say, I'll use this technique for an image and for text. So you can now see that my transfer tape is all over the place, but it will easily go around a curved surface now. I'm now not going to have to battle to get the transfer tape to go around the curved surface. So my vinyl is going to naturally sit on the curved surface where it wants to. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to place the middle first. And then I'm going to work on either side of the top line. So we're going to work with this side first. And you just want to let 
the transfer tape and naturally fall where it wants to fall and if the transfer tape overlaps each other that's not a problem that's absolutely fine because that's where it wants to fall as long as that vinyl is sitting nice and flush onto your surface that is all that you need to be concerned about just let it naturally fall where it wants to fall we can then move down to the bottom line again we're going to start in the middle and you just want to come in and just very gently start smoothing it all down and the great thing about the paper transfer tape is that because we've already come in and we've snipped it it's nice and easy to just peel away in strips if you find that when you're bringing it up you've got something like this happening where your vinyl isn't sticking that's fine just bring it back down give it a little rub and it'll be absolutely fine so that vinyl is now sat exactly where it wants to sit on this nice bulbous money jar and again you want to work with the middle first and work your way out give it a quick roller and then we can just start removing our transfer tape you will come across some materials that the vinyl just does not want to adhere to things like canvas, uh, things like slate there's times when your vinyl just does not want to adhere and I've got two tricks to help you with that so first of all in with dealing with a canvas whether you're using vinyl or iron-on you always want to make sure that there is something underneath your canvas so there is something in your canvas recess I use just a homemade pressing pillow I use these all the time I have got a tutorial on this as like most of the tips and tricks in here they have been featured in tutorials or they've got their own tutorial but you just want something that's going to sit in there so that when you press down your canvas isn't going to dip so once you've placed your vinyl as always you want to come in with your scraper or your fabric brayer or your non-stick roller and just give it a really good scrape now on this occasion the vinyl has decided that it wants to stick let me tell you that is incredibly rare with canvas and slate for the vinyl to stick first time is actually a miracle uh, so we're going to pretend that it hasn't stuck and that we're having a real nightmare with it my first number one trick is to get your scraper and you get your scraper and you're going to bring your transfer tape over your scraper and as you pull back you are scraping at the same time so you are making sure that that vinyl stays on that canvas and I find that this method works fantastically not just with canvas but with lots of other materials as well so we're just going to come in and we're just going to again wrap it around our scraper and just let see it's coming up a little bit there we're just going to get our scraper to keep it in place see the C is wanting to come up so all we're going to do is wrap our transfer tape around our scraper and just use our scraper to keep it in exactly the position we want Another option is to use a heat source such as a hairdryer or even your embossing heat gun and just come in for 10 seconds at a safe distance and just lightly heat up the area. Once you've applied heat lightly to the area you can then come in and re-scrape again and then you want to start peeling back. If you're finding that your vinyl is still not wanting to stay you can then do the scraper trick again because not only have we added our heat but we're now using the scraper so it's definitely going to adhere to our canvas or our slate or whatever materials we're having problems with So I like to weed on my mat, I find that's the easiest way to do it but I've got lots of excess so the first thing I do is I come in with my true control knife and I just 
cut where my design is. So I'm going to remove all this excess. Now I want to cut hard enough to cut through my vinyl but I obviously don't want to cut my mat. I'm then going to turn my mat over and I can then just remove the excess. The first thing I like to do is I like to come in and remove all the middle pieces. The reason for this is if I'm working with a text that is really small and really intricate Trying to remove the middle pieces once the outer vinyl is removed is quite difficult So I just find that this is the easiest way to do it. I like to put my small weeded bits on my finger And then I have my weeding box and I can just add them all in there and keep them all nice and neat You can of course use a tissue box if that's what you've got in your house Another tip for weeding is if you have got two words or different words and lots of different images and they're different fonts and different sizes and it's all a bit intricate, if you come in with your true control knife and you just very gently cut your vinyl, so you're only cutting your vinyl, you're not cutting the backing and you're just going to make little boxes around each of your text or image areas. What that's done is it's then separated the areas so it means that you're working with smaller weeding areas. So you can then see that we're able to weed pieces of the same image separately. Whether I'm using vinyl, iron-on, cardstock, it doesn't matter. I always turn my mat over I'm very careful not to over bend my mat and I can just come in and remove it that way and I find that that will stop your card and other things not only from curling but also from ripping. So you can see I've got several layers of vinyl here. Now rather than trying to individually place them on my item, I have a nice quick trick to show you. This is my bottom layer of vinyl, so this is my main image. And then everything sits in that image. So I've got my bow and I've got my transfer tape. I'm just going to come in with my fabric brayer and give that a quick roller. And I'm going to transfer it exactly the way I would onto any transfer tape. And I'm just going to come in and place it where it needs to sit. Again, I can then go in with my roller. We can then come in and just peel away. And we can carry on layering onto this back piece. As I say, we can then just keep layering on top. If you find, for example, you run out of room, so you've cut it too short, that's fine. It's not a problem. These little pieces we can put on individually onto our item. But if we've got the main bulk of our layers on this back piece here, it just makes life so much easier. Once you've got all your layers on this back piece, you can then come in and transfer it all in one go. So sometimes working with glasses can be really difficult. Not only do they have a funny shape to them, in which case you can use my trick for bulbs or curved surfaces, but also trying to get your lettering straight can be really difficult. Just a quick tip is to get some water and put it into your glass or vase or whatever it is you're using. You can then bring your vinyl in and you can place it down and you're just going to follow that water line just to make sure that your lettering is nice and straight. We can then give that a quick rub and then we can come in and just pull it away. And that lettering is now nice and straight across our glass. So I don't have a big design today because I didn't need to do one, but I wanted to show you this trick. So sometimes you may have a really big design and you find that your transfer tape is not big enough. So what we're going to do is this nice little trick. So we're going to get our transfer tape and we're going to put the first layer down 
and we're just going to let it sit as far as it can sit. We're then going to get the second piece of transfer tape. Sometimes you may find you need three, four, five pieces and we're just going to sit it so it overlaps on the piece that's already down. We're then going to transfer it exactly the way we normally would. So that is now transferred over two pieces and as I say sometimes you may need to do three, four, five. They will all stay exactly where they need to stay. When working with glass you do want to go in with some rubbing alcohol just to take away any grease or oils that you may find on your fingertips that have transferred onto the glass. We're going to get our image and place it onto our glass block. We're going to remove the top layer of transfer tape first. We can then come in and remove the next layer and you keep doing that. So you start with the top layer and you work your way backwards until you've got your last layer of transfer tape. So something I see a lot is I've got bubbles and do you know what, sometimes no matter how hard you try you end up with bubbles. So one thing you can do is just get the edge of your scraper and just come in and just really really scrape that. You still want to be gentle but just kind of work the bubbles out to the side. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to come in with your fabric brayer or non-stick roller and again do it that way. You can also get your fingernail and just press them out and then finally you may find you've got a really stubborn one like this one here. If you get something like your true control knife or you get a weeding tool with a really small tip on it, just come in and just pierce it. And you can then go in with your finger and that will eliminate the raised bubble. You will still see, if you look really closely, you'll still see where the bubble was but it's not as raised. The main trick to not getting bubbles on there is before you remove your transfer tape you give it a really really good scrape and then when you are removing your transfer tape you're removing it at an angle. So glitter iron on is notoriously difficult to see. We can see a little bit of the cut line there but we can't see all of it. So a nice quick easy tip is to use some talcum powder. So we're just going to get a little bit of talc and we're just going to spill it everywhere. Just wonderful. We're going to get a piece of paper and decant our spillage. So we're lightly going to put some talcum powder over our iron on and then we're just going to come in and just rub it in. The camera's not picking up on it so well but if we move it around slightly you can see the cut lines. Obviously if you're directly over it weeding you can see a lot better. It's definitely a trick worth remembering. So we're coming to our last tips, tricks and hacks and this one is to do with iron-on. We're going to use glitter iron-on on wood today. You can use any iron-on with wood, it works really well. We've only got four layers today, but sometimes you can have a lot of layers. I did a rainbow bright bag and the amount of layers on that was ridiculous. Many of you will have seen that tutorial. And I talked about how you could easily layer and I showed ways in which you can add the layers on top of each other using your HTV sheets. But today I want to show you how you can do several layers at once to reduce overheating your iron-on. Now you'll see with the wheels here we can't put them on top because we've got the carrier sheet and we couldn't put them under like this because we've got the HTV here and it's then going to sit on the carrier sheet. All your HTV must be on your wood. But what we can do is if we come in and we get our scissors and we just cut as close as we can to that wheel and come in, you're going to place it so that it's the right way round 
and you can then manually place it and make sure that it's sat in there and that all our iron-on is able to touch directly onto our surface and then they are going to sit like that. Now just because they've got the carrier sheet over them, that's fine, it's not a problem, they're still going to adhere. And then lastly we've got our tree, and again, that is not going to be able to sit like that. And if we put it under, part of our carrier sheet is going to sit under our HTV. So again, we're just going to come in and as close to our design as we can, we're going to snip away our carrier sheet. So I've got my Easy Press 2 set to 340 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 seconds because that is the heat that I would use it on for a normal item, so say a cotton item. So that is what I initially go in with my wood, is whatever I would normally use for a t-shirt, makeup bag, is what I will use for my wood. And because this is all one layer, we're going to reduce the amount of time that we heat up our iron on. It's not too bad with something like glitter, but if you're working with something like foil, you do not want to be overheating that. Our carrier sheet is on. We haven't waxed or stained our wood. It's completely bare, so I don't need to worry about a heat protectant sheet. And we're just going to come in 340 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 seconds. So once it's cooled down, we're going to come in and we're going to remove our layers. So we want to start with the top layer first, which in this case is our Christmas tree. And we're just going to come in and gently just peel back. We can then come in and remove the car layer. carrier sheet for that wheel came off as we brought back our car layer but this one has stayed on so we can then remove this one and finally we can come in and remove our text layer the more layers you can put on at once the less heat that you're going to do onto your iron-on which you know as I say with glitter isn't too bad but with things like foil you don't want to overheat them we can then go in and we're going to place our heat protection sheet over your Teflon sheet and we're just going to go in at 340 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 seconds just to really seal that. If you've enjoyed this video, please let me know below. If you would like another tips, tricks and hacks video, then please do let me know. I have plenty more of them. I've got lots of iron-on ones that I would love to share with you. And if you've got any tips, tricks and hacks that you would like to share with me, then please do put them in the comments below. I would love to read all about your own tips, tricks and hacks. As always, thank you for joining me. Please do subscribe and make sure you click the little bell button to get notified every time I upload a video.